Nearly two miles of track, five mind-bending pit stops, plus that shattering fuel intake. Then, that final jar to hit you at the finish. And always, that merciless second hand pushing you on. Every driver straining to crack that 11-minute bogey, the weakest go to the wall, fold up completely under the tremendous strain. It really is endurance plus if you make that last jar at the galley hall. Many months before the race, machines start to be assembled. Drivers and engineers select their chassis with infinite care, knowing the terrible hammering it's going to take. For unlike Formula One racing, this Grand Prix decrees that each machine shall have four fixed wheels and no engine. Yet another hazard in this nightmare rally. Designs, in fact, have been on the drawing board for years, but secrecy must be the watchword. Many ideas are revolutionary and could be stolen by unscrupulous foreign interests. So for as long as possible, everything is kept under wraps. The shutters are dark. Mm. Already working with simple basic machines, heavily loaded with ballast, competitors are training hard. This year, the team of Parker and Roberts is strongly fancied, and already one half of the combo is hard at work. I understand they're calling themselves the Flying Scotsman for some reason. At long last, the machines start to come out into the open. For they are now too large, too complex to occupy the workshops. Startling new designs with mind-boggling names. The Gripper Nippar, or Yob One. The Scrubbers, one name that in a few weeks will be immortalized on the scroll of honor. Faster. Nine minutes, 20 seconds. 9.21, 9.22, 9.23. Clip off a couple of seconds a day, that might just do it. Whoops, steady there! Lost a second or two, <laughs> but must press on. 9.27, 9.28. But he's not the only one. All over the countryside, the opposition's training hard with that same bulldog determination. Man or woman, they're all at it, for the Hartford circuit is no respecter of sexes. It's a race with no holds barred. If the problems of the track itself are tough, the problems of fuel intake are even tough. <coughs> In small practice tracks all over the area, competitors are training hard to knock off those precious seconds of the pit stops. No doubt about it, this makes the marathon look like an egg and spoon race. <coughs> But it's the apprentices who give it that final touch. Traditional racing colors and sophisticated designs are painstakingly painted on by hand. This machine, the Haggis Bashers, may be an outsider, but you never know. In this race, anything can happen. Nothing is certain. The Parker Roberts combo is still going great guns, but the team from Tottenham Hotspur is also strongly fancied. And what about Batmobile 4? Randolph Express or Pufta. Only time will tell, for training is over. Tomorrow, tomorrow is the big race.
They come from far and wide, the world and his wife. Anyone who is anyone is there. Around the heath, the air simmers with curiosity and anticipation. The excitement is so intense, you can cut it with a knife. For now, at long last, it's all out in the open. 88 runners for all to see. Not everyone can win, of course. Many runners know they haven't the ghost of a chance against the highly trained professionals. But it doesn't really matter. What counts, like Everest, is that they're there. Winning isn't that important. It's the race that counts. There really is an amazing selection of machines here today. I don't think I've ever seen anything, anything quite like it. And fortunately, I have with me here Monsieur Louis Chirut, the world-famous French racing driver. Let's see what he has to say. Que uh, pensez-vous, uh, cher Louis? Huh? Uh, bien. I uh, not uh, expect to see a racing motor as I've got here. Mm. Wow. Uh, où sont les moteurs? Incroyable. Hein? Thank you, uh, Monsieur Chirut. Uh, good to know what the Francais uh, pensait. Well, it shouldn't be long now. They're arriving thick and fast. All the runners should be here on the heath in a few minutes. Well, let's see what's happening around the rest of the track. Over to Ernie Brickman at the finish. <laughs> well, it's the same picture here. Crowds building up from every corner of the country. It really has taken the nation by storm. And I've just been told that one fan has actually travelled from as far away as Luke. There's enthusiasm for you. Everyone in a sense of agony and suspense waiting for that number one to come crashing through to win one of the trophies already on display. Surely the most coveted prizes in all of racing. Well, now let's have a look at what's going on over at the other pit stops. So over now to pit stop four and Angus McCock. And a happy hogmanay to you. They're very sociable in this part of the world, and I'm pleased to tell you that the marshals and mechanics are tackling the fuel intake problem very thoroughly. Very thoroughly indeed. Uh, oh, uh, just a wee drum, thanks very much. Uh, uh, what about you, uh, Dermot O'Reilly over at Intake 3, uh, Pit Stop 3? <laughs> Me. Oh, the hello there, hello, that's it, yes, me. Uh, this is the Dermot O'Reilly at Pit Stop O'Tree. And believe me, it's very social here as well. I'm very happy about that. Very happy indeed. In fact, I'm a mite bothered that the fuel might run out, which would be a terrible disaster of major proportions. Uh, and uh, put it right up to the top, darling, that's it, that's the idea. Thank you, Dermot O'Reilly. Well, over here on the heath, marshals and stewards are checking for any irregularities. Four fixed wheels is the strict rule, and any competitor will be instantly disqualified if he tries to improve his handicap by extra ballast or anything like that. Even the use of a steering wheel means instant disqualification. Hmm, wonder about this one. Undercarriage may be a trifle wide, but attractive chassis. Yes, I must say, this race clearly shows to the rest of the world that English craftsmanship isn't finished, not by a long shot. Only a minute to go now. Just a few last minute adjustments. Like the screw here, not there. Five pit stops, five fuel intakes. Everything checked, boys ready, and... Ah, there's the Parker Roberts combo, off but a good lick. Looks as though their hard training might pay off. All going like clockwork. Speaks very highly for the tremendous feats of organization that have been going on behind the scenes. Now let's see what's happening at pit stop one. Over to you, Major Johnson. 
Well, I never. There is a space object on the public highway. It should not be out there, I'm telling you. Hey, Johnson. Hey, Johnson. Uh, pardon, sahib, but uh, the Honorable Major is in the saloon. The where the hell is? In the saloon, sir. Lying down. I am here to deputize with the sahib. I am uh, Mr. Raj Patel, of the Bombay Carrison. Very well, then I carry on. Thank you, sir. I am not a drinking man, you understand. And I must say it seems still to myself when people in fancy dress rush in, drinking quickly of drink and rush out again. Goodness gracious, what a carry on is here. Yes. <laughs> bit tricky to know exactly what's happening at pit stop one, but the race is going superbly. That is the main thing, a race. And there's the one with the interesting chassis. What a go! Right, another quick word with the curry center at pit stop one. Now I am in total confusion. If a race, why such a slow concoction is this vehicle? More like a tortoise on the hoogly, oh God! It will explode us all to the kingdom of come. Right over to Nigel Mauve at pit stop two. Oh, I'm on. <laughs> Nigel Mauve speaking and saying, Christopher, what a noise. And all these people. They told me it'd be exactly like Ascot. God, I wouldn't have come if I'd known. Still, I must admit those two chaps look absolutely super in those dinky shorts. Those thunderously good looking legs. I must say I'm not too mad about those convict fellows. Not my style at all. And all that ghastly beer first thing in the morning. Still, I'm here. That's all that matters. Talk about women's lib, my dear. Well, I mean, that's something else, isn't it? Half-naked women knocking around the village first thing in the morning doing their shopping. Well, over to you, Dermot O'Reilly. Where are you? Where is she, dear? You're a generous fellow. Mm. Uh, excuse me, no. I, I can just reach, see through the windows here that the, um, who is it there? Who is that? Oh, the, the flying Scotsman team, what are doing the great, really great there. But who the hell are them fellas racing in the, the what the Tottenham Hotspur is it? Jabber, my God, they must be good at putting it in the net, I tell you that, but not down their gullet. It's all over the shop, just look at that there, look at that. Quite right, Dermot. Action replay. Action replay. It looks to me as though a certain amount of the fuel intake may not have gone into the correct place. But there's been no steward's objection, so on with the race. And that's uh, Angus McConk here at Pitched Up Board. So here they come, the haggis bashers, and a fine pair they make. Maybe a wee mite slow, but obviously a part of a very deep campaign tactic. Can they tactic? It was, that's a wee can of tactic. Always beat the Sassanac. You know, if I get the hair and the tortoise. <laughs> and here are those Tottenham Hotspur fellas. There's been a wee bit of controversy about these two. Aye, there it is. Aye, look at it. Hey, will you look at that? Action replay. Action replay. Jock, we are now. Action replay with you. Action replay it is, and I must say that on the face of it, it may appear that a little of the fuel might just be off the mark. But no steward's objection, so it's on with the race. <laughs> cheat! Cheat, you bloody Sassanac cheat! Oh, that's fair. If that's the way you're going to play it, then we've got a couple of tricks of our kilts. Never fear the haggis bashers, I'll chew you yet, you stinking stupid... <laughs> I admit this race isn't much of a concourse d'elegance, but uh, 
one or two of the ladies would really do a credit in the Royal Inclusion at Ascot. Hey, very lovely. Hey, very lovely indeed. Hey, hey. <laughs> Starting to pull out all the stops, but watch it. Watch it. Bit of an ugly smash that. That looks no bones broken, so on with it. Aye, press on, press on. I'm quite alarmed at the appearance of this guy here. No doubt about it, though, the crowd's right behind him. Hey, I must say, a most unusual couple. I don't like the look of either of them or their machine, for that matter. Too basic for my money. But I'll say this about the lady, although frankly not my type, she's got a first-rate racing style. Just watch those two great big long legs go. Aye, it's tremendous. <laughs> This is it, this is the home stretch, and this is what it's all about. This is where the cream starts to come to the top. And they're pouring in, nearly all of them making good times, all towards that final jar at the finish and the last click of the stop. Well, here they come, a couple of real beauties. Probably most popular pair in all of the race. I think there's a bit of a dust up here between... Oh, is it Gripper, Nipper and Pufter? I think it is, yes. Fortunately, seems to be nothing serious and the stewards have sorted it out. Well, frankly, I'm amazed how well the runners have behaved anyway under these tremendous tensions. <laughs> Well, Ernie, it's been a great race. A great race. Any surprises? Uh, one or two, but on the whole, everyone's run pretty much to form. <laughs> Thank you, Ernie. Well, I can tell you that the judges and marshals are now meeting in secret, checking the times, and there's no arguing with that stopwatch. The fastest time is the winner every time. Mind you, while we're waiting for the result, there'll be some sharp eyes looking around for new ideas for next year. There's been some most interesting and revolutionary designs. Some of them certainly well worth investigating. Well, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you for your patience in waiting while the judges have been working out the uh, times. It's very difficult, as you could appreciate. We had 88 entries, which is fantastic. Any moment now, by tradition, the second place will be announced first. And here it comes. Second place goes to number 14, the Spurs. Tottenham Hotspur, a popular win, although there's bound to be a controversy about the action replay. And they did it in 11 minutes, 15 seconds. Now for it. First place. Now for number one. Is entry number 17 in the fantastic time of 10.34. A world record. <laughs> so for the Parker Roberts combo, the flying Scotsman, the training really paid off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
be clear, you think they can do it in 10 minutes, come to the Athletic Club and we'll make sure you'll do it in nine. So we, we, need, we need new members. We would also add a little word to Spurs. If they'd like to come along Wednesdays and Sundays. <laughs> So, that's it. That Grand Prix of racing, the great pram race is ever. Until next year.